Greetings, sports fans. This time is another quiz. Woohoo! If you hate quizzes, I'm sorry, but I kind of like them. And they're fun to talk about a lot of variety of movies, even if you don't listen to and score yourself. So here is the Victoria Anna quiz. Uh, sorry, Victoriana quiz, named after Queen Victoria, not because anyone is particularly victorious. In fact, some of Britain's biggest disasters happened during this time, but the Queen was called Victoria, so there's that. Three of the most, I'm not gonna read this, but you can tell Sherlock Holmes, Count Dracula, and Jack the Ripper are really, really important Victorian characters. There's others, but these are, you know, but these are Victorian, and they're England, and so here they are. And each of these following 25 slides have pictures of these characters and questions worth points. So, like, figure it out, add up your points. If you got a really high score and I'm convinced you actually earned it instead of cheating, I will buy you a drink if you ever see me. So, uh, that's your reward. And let's go on to the next sl first slide. And here we are for one point. Name this guy who has played Holmes three times and Dracula ten times. And I'll bet you know that he is Christopher Lee. And uh, he g g finally gave up playing Dracula because he didn't even get a speaking role in some of his Dracula movies. He just hissed and he got sick of that. Which is, I can kind of see his point because he has a great speaking voice, but I also love him even when he just hisses. So let's go on to uh, number two. Okay, for one point, he played Dracula only twice on film, but he was a, did a lot on stage. It's kind of how he made his money in the 40s and 50s. He'd show up on a stage of a, of a movie. it would be a movie screen. Going to show some movie, you know, like The Wolfman or something. And he would show up first and do his little Dracula show. And, of course, he is, uh, he is famously uh, always Dracula associated with him because this is Bela Lugosi. Came from Hungary and... Uh, has a really great accent and uh, I you know I like him I would say that his his version of Dracula is actually not as good as Christopher Lee's horror of Dracula but hey it was the first one done and it did the best they could and he was really good in it just the movie was kind of plotting besides that so and that wasn't always his fault so go on to number three Okay, who's this guy? He was Sherlock Holmes 14 times on film. When I was a kid, I thought he was the greatest Sherlock Holmes there ever was, but he's not. And he is, of course, Basil Rathbone. And you can look him up. There have been better uh, Sherlock Holmeses since him, but he was pretty good. One of his flaws was that Nigel Bruce, who played his Dr. Watson, was a real numb nuts. I mean, he was portrayed as being so stupid, I can't believe Sherlock would even hang around with him. But sure, Watsons have gotten better since his time. And over the over the course of Basil Rathbone's career as Holmes, Nigel Bruce as Watson got stupider and stupider till finally he was like, you'd wonder how this guy could like put his pants on in the morning. It was pretty sad. Okay, on to number four. Okay, he played Dracula and Jack the Ripper. They didn't call him Jack the Ripper, and I don't know why, but he was, right? So who is he? He's great. He did push-ups at the Oscars because he is Jack Palance. Now, the Dracula movie is called, you know, Dracula, but um, the Jack the Ripper movie is called Man in the Attic, and uh, he was really good, where they thought this guy in the attic was was the Ripper, but they weren't sure, but he was. Anyway, he also was a really good Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which is also a Victorian thing, which I didn't include in my list of Victorian things, so I didn't mention it as one of the points you can get, but hey, he was cool. So on to number five. Here we are. BBC's Sherlock didn't have very many episodes because the BBC doesn't show you very many episodes anymore. And you know who played Holmes, right? And then you get Watson. So Holmes is, of course, um, Benedict Bandersnatch. And uh, Watson is Martin Freeman, who is a great actor and everyone loves him. And this is probably the most dysfunctional Holmes I've seen. I mean, I'm not saying I didn't like him as Holmes, but he was very uh, psychopathic. I know he says he's a sociopath, not a psychopath, but there's not actually a difference. Um, my uh, uh, my therapist tells me. So uh, anyway, yeah, uh, psychopathic Holmes, and of course Holmes always has to be a little bit off. That's what makes him Holmes. But this is the most off I've seen. Not saying it's bad, just remarking on the fact. Now let's go on to number six. Okay, so this was in fact the greatest Holmes I've ever seen. 
and uh, he played. Uh, he also was Watson once. It, two points you get if you get, know this actor's name, and then for two other points you can tell the guy who was Holmes when he was Watson. And he is also off as Holmes, just like not as far off as Benedict Cumberbatch, but uh, but he's obviously doesn't really fit into modern society. So it's a good thing he is Watson to make him human. And this is Jeremy Brett, and when he played Watson. He played one of the few actors who could overpower him on stage, which was Charlton Heston, who, of course, has such charisma that nobody can, you know, steal a scene from him, right? That's kind of Charlton Heston's thing. So there it goes. So we'll go on to number seven. Oh, yeah. He played Holmes on TV. He played Dracula on film. Uh, I don't think he was the greatest in either of those, but this is, of course... Frank Langella, the best Skeletor ever. Good old Frank Langella. What a guy. I like him a lot. On to number eight. Okay, so Bram Stoker's Dracula is pretty great because although it's called Bram Stoker's Dracula, it actually is so different from Bram Stoker's actual Dracula that they had to do a separate novel, so that was hilarious. Okay, who's Dracula? Do you know? It is, one point, Gary Oldman who is really good at playing villains, and he's good at this villain, too. And uh, I like the first part of this movie a lot more than the last part. And if you've seen it, you know why. And the director, whom I also love, is, of course, for two points, Francis Ford Coppola. He's good. And as I recall, he got to start doing a um, doing a slasher movie, so that's cool, too. Back in District 13 or something 13. Anyway, on to number nine. Time After Time, a movie that has sk still scarred my wife to this day because she thought it was really scary. We saw it the year we got married, so she wasn't used to all the horror stuff yet, and it really uh, triggered her. So, who plays Jack the Ripper? And by the way, he is one of the greatest Jack the Rippers I've ever seen because of who he is, and he is, of course, David Warner. Man alive, what a guy. I just love David Warner and anything he plays in. Um, and who plays H.G. Wells. You may know him better, because, but I'm, I actually know David Warner better, but this other guy is good too. And that is Malcolm McDowell, and he's been a ton of stuff, and he's worth watching. So he chases Jack the Ripper into the modern age and tries to catch him. One of the funny things about it that they point out is that um, Jack the Ripper, like, he doesn't have to, like, hide and conceal himself in modern times. Yeah, he's doing slasher murders, but there's so much horrible stuff going on in 1979 that Jack the Ripper's atrocities just kind of, like... Yeah, another guy's killing girls. Big deal. So only uh, H.G. Wells goes after him. Oh, this is also the source of an in-joke we, we still have at our house to this day when H.G. Uh, Wells says, let's go to that Scottish place for lunch. And of course he's referring to McDonald's. So from then on, I constantly will, will offer to take my kids or my parents somewhere to that Scottish place and they get excited and then it, it's McDonald's because, you know, anyway, that's my joke. It's a dad joke, but hey, if you're a dad, you can always use more dad jokes, right? Number 10. Okay, this movie, Dracula vs. Frankenstein, is uh, the author who says the worst ever portrayal of Dracula. I would say this is a good good case for that. Two points named the actor. The actor is Xandor Vorkov. Probably not his real name. I think he only made two movies, but this is one of them, and man alive, it is astonishing. Well, let me just tell you this one amazing fact about it. Dracula defeats Frankenstein's monster by carving him up with his laser beam ring that, as everyone knows, Dracula has, right? Right? Okay, two points. Name the director. This director is... I won't do a drum roll. I was about to do a drum roll, but I won't. Al Adamson. He made a lot of cheap, nasty, terrible horror movies, such as Blood of Ghastly Horror. This is one of his dumbest, so be warned. But at least he has good makeup. And it's filmed in, like, abandoned houses and stuff because Adamson is, like, penniless. And uh, you can tell he's penniless if he has a Dracula that looks like this. On to the next movie. Oh, yeah. This may be the best Dracula movie ever. It's certainly one of the best. What's the name? It changed the names because Bram Stoker's Dracula was still in copyright. This was so early, it was still copyrighted. And this is, of course, the movie is Nosferatu. Who is the actor playing Dracula? Let's wait. It is Max Schreck. Now, when I was a kid, they theorized that, in fact, because Schreck means fear, that Max Schreck was not his real name, and he had some other name, and uh, and he wasn't really that guy, and who knows where he came from. And that was cool because it, because it meant that they, they that later on uh, Nick Cage produced a movie, um, Blood of the Vampire, um, in which 
they put, they decided that Max Shrek wasn't real, and in fact, they had an actual vampire to play the role, which Max Shrek is convincing as a vampire, I gotta say. But in fact, there appears to actually have been a guy named Max Shrek. But hey, maybe he was a vampire, right? And uh, he was in other, they found a couple of the movies with him, or at least pictures of him in movies. What's the name of the character? They wanted him to be Count Dracula, but they couldn't because of the Bram Stoker estate. So he is... Count Orlock. And if you haven't seen this Dracula movie, good heavens, it's only like 60 minutes long and it is so good. Don't be fooled by the fact that it's silent. It's great. Everything about this movie is great. The Renfield is great. The uh, the Dracula uh, standing in a boat that moves across the water by itself is great. Dracula, op- a door's opening as he drifts in because doors cannot bar them. I mean, everything about it is fabulous. People dying of the plague where he comes because he brings the Black Death with him, because of course he would. And now on to number 12. This is not Dracula. This is Sherlock Holmes investigating the Ripper murders. And this is um, one of those two movies. It's directed by the guy that directed Porky's, but it's not very similar. And who is this person? Well, he is, of course, Christopher Plummer. So a good actor um, who we don't see enough of nowadays. And uh, the movie is called Murder by Decree, the idea being that the Ripper murders were being done as a cover-up. Now, one of the best things, there's a, the, one of the theories about Jack the Ripper, which is a delightful theory, is that a member of the royal household was an insane serial killer and was doing the Ripper killings. And to cover up the fact that he was doing this, one of the court doctors was sent out to do more murders to obfuscate things and keep the royal from being caught. And so it's like a, it's like a, it's like an evil government plot. Usually I hate movies with evil government plots because they're dumb, but hey, if it's the evil British governor, government, then I'm okay with it. So, you know, there it is. Anyway, Murder by Decree. And one of the, all, one of the good things about this movie is that James Mason plays Dr. Watson. He is one of my favorite actors of all time and he refused to play a stupid joke Watson and wanted to be smart which is a great trend in Watson's number 13 okay he has played Jack the Ripper and Dracula and he's played everything one point who is he he is of course Klaus Kinski who directed the Ripper movie well sadly it was just Franco who was a terrible director he's just bad and what's the Dracula movie well um, you're probably thinking he looks a lot like Max Shrek in uh, Nosferatu because this second movie is Nosferatu, though a different modern version of it in the 80s, and it is by, for two points, Werner Herzog, who's a great director. So Jess Franco is one of the worst directors ever, and Werner Herzog is one of the best directors ever, and Klaus Kinski has spanned all that gap in talent because Klaus Kinski is bulletproof and can just do anything. I love Klaus Kinski. And we will now go on to... I probably would not love him in person. By all accounts, he's a horrible jerk in person. But, hey, I don't have to be in person when I'm watching a movie, right? So number 14. Uh, I've seen every season of this guy's show except the last one. What's the name of the series? It is Elementary. And who's the actor? Well... This guy is Johnny Lee Miller. I watched every single season of Elementary except the very last season because Hulu wanted me to pay more for it. I didn't like it quite enough to pay extra, so I canceled my Hulu membership instead. So let that be a warning to you, Amazon Prime. The more you make me pay for things, the less I'm going to want to have you around. Got it? No microtransactions. Number 15. From Hell, this is in fact the, the, the same, that plot I told you about of uh, <coughs> the Ripper killings where there's a there's an insane royal doing it, it's being covered up by a doctor. So uh, who is this guy, the actor who plays the killer? It is Sir Ian Holm. You probably remember him best as Bilbo from uh, Peter Jackson's uh, Lord of the Rings movie, but he was in a lot of things. He was even Dr. Frankenstein once. And there was a graphic novel called From Hell, which by the way, the word from hell is from a note the Ripper sent to the police in which he said, from hell, your friend Jack, right? So, cause that's where he was writing from. The writer of the graphic novel is of course by Alan Moore because who else would write a novel about Jack the Ripper, right? Besides, you know, a not a novel graphic, it'd be Alan Moore, right? Number 16. Okay. This is better known for being King Leonidas, but hey, he was Dracula 2000, which I kind of liked. For one point, Gerard Butler. Who are the other actors who have been in this quiz who are also in Dracula 2000? Two points each. Well, they are uh, Christopher Plummer, who plays Van Helsing, and Johnny Lee Miller, who played uh, the guy in Elementary, who is a character that's unique to the film and not in other Dracula shows. So I kind of liked it. 
you know, I didn't, I haven't felt compelled to watch it again, but, you know, I, I didn't regret watching it as I have some movies. On to number 17. This is it. So this is played up the fact that Holmes used cocaine, which, and uh, so he meets a guy to, to <coughs> fix his cocaine. And so for two points, who's playing Holmes? Might be hard to tell from this image, but it is Nicole Williamson. Who is the guy that tries to cure his cocaine addiction? And the answer is that, of course, it would have to be Sigmund Freud. And for two more, for two points, who is playing Sigmund Freud? Look at that picture. Who is that guy? Do you know who it is? It's Alan Arkin, whom I will always love for his movie, The In-Laws. And also for his movie, The Russians Are Coming. The Russians Are Coming. Those are great movies, and Alan Arkin did a great understudied uh, version of, uh, of comedy. Number 18. Bridge Across Time. The ghost of Jack the Ripper came on the London Bridge. So if you know where the London Bridge was moved to, you'll know where this happens. Who is playing the cop trying to fight Jack the Ripper? You should know because it is, of course, David Hasselhoff. And before you look up where the town is, try to get you three points. You know? Nope. Okay. It's Lake Havasu City in uh, in Arizona. And uh, yeah. So if you go there, watch for the ghost of Jack the Ripper because he's cool. And now we're going on to number 19. So this is the other movie where Holmes investigates um, the Ripper murders. For two points, you get the name of the movie. And it is called A Study in Terror which is a good name for it. And who plays Holmes? Well, you might know this actor better. He's on the right, by the way, uh, as Baron Munchausen from Terry Gilliam's movie. But in this, he is Sherlock Holmes, and he is John Neville. Who's the guy on the left? He is Inspector Lestrade, who is, of course, Holmes, not nemesis, but like the cop that works with them. And he gets, he got to play Inspector Lestrade both in this movie and in the Christopher Plummer movie. So I guess he is... Uh, typecast to be Lestrade forever. Number 20. Wolf in the Fold. Jack the Ripper is an immortal non-corporeal thing that feeds on fear. What is the TV series? You should be able to get this for one point because just look at the background in the suit. Yeah, it's, it's Star Trek. The old Star Trek. Who, what's the name? So, the name of the entity is, well, he calls himself Red Jack, among other names. Uh, and who played the Ripper's host? And his host, this guy, and this is John Fiedler. He's famously a nervous little guy. In fact, you will know him. He is Piglet's voice in Winnie the Pooh, which that's you know exactly what he's like. So this episode was written by Robert Block, who wrote Psycho and some other great and a bunch of Lovecrafty and stuff. And also at one point, the whole ship gets possessed by Jack the Ripper, which is. Uh, which is pretty awesome. So, uh, old Star Trek. I bet you didn't know that, that, that the Enterprise was possessed by Jack the Ripper for a while. That's cool, right? Number 21. So, this is The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes, and it's done by one of the great directors of all time, though this is not one of his greatest movies. And the director is Billy Wilder. Everything he does is good, pretty much. This is, like, when I say this is the worst Billy Wilder film, it's still good. It's just, like, not as good. And he is investigating a cryptid. And what cryptid... This is... It's only one point, because what cryptid would you Holmes investigate? It's obvious what it would be. The only possible cryptid for him to investigate is the Loch Ness Monster. Duh. Oh, by the way, um... Uh, we don't actually know how good this movie was because it got heavily cut before release, so maybe it was better before it was cut, but it seems slow now, so maybe it was actually improved by being cut, you know? And there's Mycroft Holmes appears in this, and he has pe appeared previously in this quiz because he is, for two points, Christopher Lee, which I think is a miscasting because I would argue that I want Christopher Lee to beat Holmes, not Mycroft, but on to number 22. The Ripper... I've seen this direct-to-video horror movie shot on location in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is not good enough horror movies. And of course, the guy that gets to play Jack the Ripper looks like Jack the Ripper, acts like Jack the Ripper, has really good special effects because for three points, this is Tom Savini. And man alive, he's good in this because he's good in everything and I love his special effects. I don't know why Jack the Ripper has yellow eyes, but why not, right? I guess he's I guess he's a re resurrected Jack the Ripper or something because of my, I mean I saw the movie, but I saw it in like 1986, so I don't remember. Number 23. See the guy in the left? He played the Wolfman, he played the Frankenstein monster, he played the mummy, and he played Dracula. Who is he? He is da da dun 
Lon Chaney Jr., whose name was not Lon Chaney. He changed it to Lon Chaney Jr. to play off his dad's fame. It wasn't his fault. He tried to make it on his own for a while because he didn't really like his dad that much because his dad was, although a great actor, kind of a jerk. But he finally said, I need to make money, so I'll use my dad's name. And he actually isn't a bad actor. He's very different looking from his dad. But he's a huge hulking guy, which really is useful as the Wolfman and the Mummy and Frankenstein monster. As Dracula, not so much. What's the movie where he plays Dracula? The Son of Dracula. However, although it's called The Son of Dracula, he's actually playing Dracula, not like The Son of Dracula. It's, okay. Also, what is the pseudonym he uses in the movie? I watched this movie in the, in the uh, drive-in and, and didn't figure it out. It is Alucard, Count Alucard, and I didn't figure out watching it until the kid figures that out on screen. I never forgot that humiliation, and now whenever I see any weird name, I always quickly spell it backwards, backwards just in case so I don't get fooled again. So this is an obsessive compulsive trait of mine that I do not care for. And I blame you, uh, son of Dracula, for it. Also, your stupid death where you fall into a hole with a, a chair leg sticking up that pierces you. Seriously? What a dumb way to die. Okay, anyway, we'll move on to the next movie. 24. This was the very first guy to be Holmes on stage and in a movie. And so no one's gonna get this right. That's why it's worth four points. In case you got it right, it's William Gillette. This movie is 1916, during World War I. There was a movie featuring Holmes. So that's kind of cool. And he looks very Holmesian. So now onto the last film, which is good, by the way. Um, it's by a novel, which is ba which is a fictional work based on the Ripper murders. It made it, made it into, into movies five different times. And this is from the 1944 film, which is the only one I've seen, but man, it's good. The novel is called The Lodger. The actor is a really good actor that died tragically young, like in his 40s. His name is Laird Kriegar. So The Lodger is really interesting, I think, because it's really obvious that The Lodger is Jack the Ripper, okay? But the people who live in the house and around, they can't bring themselves to believe it. And so they realistically are slow to think he's really Jack the Ripper because that would just be insane that they happen to have Jack the Ripper living in their boarding house. Who would believe that? And so because no one can believe it, he's he's actually able to do a lot more evil. And it's it's done it's done realistically and authentically, and I really like it. So uh, 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 and sadly, they do historically catch Jack the Ripper in it, um, or you know, get rid of him. So I forget why how they explain away the fact that. Uh, uh, the Gat Ridder Jack the Ripper, but whatever. Anyway, those are my 25 movies. If you like old, cool things, then maybe you like me, and that means you want to buy my stuff so I can keep being old and cool for longer. So do so. Also, click notifications and subscribe. Thank you. I will see you next week.